screencast I'm going to demonstrate a kind of quick and dirty shattered glass effect or shattered image effect. Um, what I'll do first is bring in the bitmap that I want to shatter. Uh, I'll pick one of my long lost loves uh, to do this to and that would be Selma Simpson. Hot hot woman. Um, what I'll do first is create two rectangles approximately the same size as the image. It doesn't have to be. Um, you can click on the image, find out the width and the height, and we can kind of modify this to be something similar. We'll create a second duplicate object with a slightly different color just to differentiate the two. No real reasoning behind it. Um, now what I'll do is take that first, take this green object. Actually it doesn't work to, to work it doesn't work too well with black. I'll change that one to green. You'll see why in a second. So I'll zoom in on that first one a little bit closer. And I'm going to take the Bezier tool. Now I'm going to draw these spider web cracks around. I'm going to proceed kind of in a counterclockwise direction. Uh, you may have to do it a few times to get the effect to look right uh, and be happy with it, but we'll give it a shot here. And you'll see what I'm doing in a second. I'm kind of trying to match up that one kind of breaking point in the glass. It's not critical. Uh, I don't think I haven't studied the way that glass shatters. Uh, and the points don't really have to be on, I wouldn't think. So that'll probably do it, and then I'll come back in, and I found that if I go around in kind of the same direction in a spider web type of pattern, I can achieve a somewhat realistic looking shattered effect. There we go. Now what I'll do is select the line, select the shape behind it, so they're both selected and I will take path intersection no, I'm sorry I will select them both let me make sure I've got them both take path difference and I get that kind of shattered effect or at least the pieces of that effect part of some of the pieces um, and now what I'll do here is I will select the two objects bring up the align dialog box and align them and now I will actually let me back up a step let's duplicate that original then I will take these two align them and I will send the green one to the back and then I will do select both of them and do a difference function. So now I've got anything that's white in this shape is green in this shape, so I've effectively between these two shapes got all the pieces. Now what I'm going to do is 
duplicate those two, which we may use in the end. And now, for each shape, right now, if I move this over, it's going to fill in the gaps perfectly there. I don't really want that. What I want is a, a slight gap between all the pieces. So I will take this first shape, double click it to get the notes, and then I will do a dynamic offset. And I'll just inset them. You should see it move. There you go. So I've inset that one slightly. I will double click this one. Again, dynamic offset. Hit Control J on that one. And again, offset that one in slightly. If you don't like it, you can always undo it. Ah. Hang on. Ah. Sorry about that. My mistake. Control J and offset it slightly. That's fine. And now you can see that there'll be gaps between them. If I can get it over here to drag. So now there's going to be gaps between all the pieces, like that, which is what we want. Now what I'll do is duplicate Selma, so we have two of them. Take this one over to this shape. Send her to the back behind that shape. Select them both. And we're going to do Object, Clip, Set. So now she's taken on in those pieces. And we will bring Selma in behind this one. You don't have to get the alignment perfect uh, unless you're a real stickler. You can use guides and things like that. For me, it doesn't really matter for this purpose. Do Object, Clip, Set. Now I've got my two pieces here, and I can bring them together slightly to get that shattered effect. You can see it here. Okay. Now, one other thing you can do is you could put shadows under part of the pieces. Um, if we wanted to use this spare one that we left here, we could always make it black using fill and stroke, change the color of it to black, and maybe give it a, a slight blur bring down the opacity a little bit, maybe an even bigger blur, like that. And you can drag that up underneath those pieces. Send it to the back, so you get this kind of shadowed effect. That may or may not be something you want to do. If I choose not to, I can just leave it the way it is. And you get a halfway decent shattered picture effect. You can do that with photos or uh, any, any kind of bitmap image. So that's it. Hopefully uh, you found this one interesting, and thanks for watching.